Less than 72 hours after his confessional news conference designed to begin rebuilding his support among fans and advertisers, baseball superstar Alex Rodriguez's already improbable story of how and when he used steroids has fallen apart. Our third story in the countdown, he said the drug Boli, Primo Bolin, had been obtained for him by a cousin. Today, a newspaper report revealed Rodriguez had a personal trainer long linked to steroids. He said the steroids had been purchased over the counter in the Dominican Republic. Today, another report revealed the drug is not even legally available there with a prescription. And he insisted he had not used any performance-enhancing drugs since the 2003 season. But today, the story about that notorious trainer included the startling revelation that the man had traveled with Rodriguez as recently as the baseball season of 2003. Seven. As detailed in baseball's Mitchell report, Angel Presinal was the personal trainer to Indian slugger Juan Gonzalez in 2001, when a bag owned either by Gonzalez or Presinal containing anabolic steroids and syringes was discovered at the airport in Toronto. Each man denied ownership of the bag, but Presinal was banned from the clubhouses of Major League Baseball. Players, however, continued to train with him, players like Alex Rodriguez. The New York Daily News today reporting Presinal accompanied Rodriguez for the entire 2007 season, stayed in the same hotel as he did, splitting a room with Rodriguez's mysterious, mysterious cousin, who has now been identified as a man named Yuri Shukart. A source tells the newspaper, quote, you would never see Alex with Presinal. They would meet in one of their rooms. And that bully that Rodriguez said his cousin obtained over the counter in the Dominican Republic, the DR, ESPN spoke to Dr. Pia Veras, who oversees the agency that regulates pharmaceutical drugs in the Dominican. He says Boli, Prima Bolin, is not legally available over the country, over the counter in his country, not even with a prescription. And that the same was true for the time frame Rodriguez says he was using the drug from 2001 to 2003. Joining me for the second time this week about this is Richard Justice, sports columnist for the Houston Chronicle. Richard, good evening again. Hi, Keith. When he got it, um, when he used it, where he got it, who he got it from, they're all in doubt now. It, it, this ship is sinking kind of fast, isn't it? Well, he's managed to shift the debate to from uh, where he got it, who he got it from, and all of that. He'll have plenty of time to answer that to MLB investigators, too. How dumb are you yeah. to come in front of hundreds of reporters and tell a story that can be unraveled within hours, beginning with the fact, Keith, that he tested positive for two substances and now saying, hey, my cousin and I were just fooling around with this one thing we did. It just doesn't make any sense. For this guy particularly, one of the most calculated people you'll ever meet, that's one of the reasons players, his teammates haven't liked him over the years. They, they view him as, as a phony. And to, to tell a story that just didn't, didn't hold water for two hours it's just, it boggles your mind. It really does. The, the country is remarkably forgiving, especially to its athletes. Jason Giambi, five years ago now, I guess it is, apologized for using steroids, never said the word steroids, still has never said the word steroids, and was almost utterly forgiven, uh, given that, that this was a, a, a sport and a country looking for almost any excuse to forgive Alex Rodriguez. How could he, and maybe more importantly, how could the people who make money from him have screwed up this news conference and this apology so bad? You know, this smacked of a, of a professional athlete, a kid that's had his shoes kissed every room he walked into from the time he was 16 years old. Your value system gets screwed up. You think, whatever the truth I say is, is the truth. And, you know, and, and in defense of him, he's told the larger truth. I cheated. I think he understands that. Now he's decided he's going to lie about every, every, everything else. And he just, I guess it was just a failure to understand. And it, it's... It, Everything is crumbled for him. This is the guy that wanted to be Cal Ripken squared. And he, he, he was so careful about everything, and he just can't bring himself to say, I'm sorry. I, I have told this, uh, Roger Clemens, this. If, mm -hmm. you just say, if you just say, I'm sorry, you can't believe how many people will just say, hey, we want to forgive you. As we've dis discussed, uh, this has been true for Pete Rose for 20 years, and he's only occasionally gotten even glimpses of, of that. But, I, but th what's going to happen now? Because there was an ESPN report today that Major League Baseball is now going to look into this relationship between Rodriguez and this trainer, Presinal, and that the possibility of a suspension rests on this relationship because this guy has essentially been banned by baseball, and you're not supposed to associate with him. Do we have any idea where this is going from here? Well, Commissioner Bud Selig has wanted to suspend guys through the years for this. Bonds, on a couple of occasions, his people have talked to him 
out of it. And his his position is, hey, I'm over here, you're over here, let's draw a line. Uh, I don't think he's going to. And I th here's the reason. I think if, if Alex cooperates with MLB investigators, and if they perceive he's being honest, and in this interview, there will be all kinds of follow-up questions, I think they'll let it go. Because let's remember, Bud Seelig is also a protector of the game. And, you know, and Keith, and you talk about jail time for bonds or suspension for A-Rod. It doesn't matter. The things they value the most, their greatness, their legacy, all that, that is all gone. So all this mm -hmm. other stuff is almost irrelevant. But um, there is still a season ahead of us and ahead of, of Alex Rodriguez and this prospect of suspension. I've always wondered, and I'm sure the commissioner has thought of it in these terms, too. If you were to suspend him on whatever pretext you wanted to and say, all right, now the union, the Players Association, is going to appeal, um, are you not saying, okay, I'm the commissioner of baseball and I'm standing up for what's right and what, what people, how people should behave. You guys in the union are clearly defending somebody who was wrong. Go ahead, defend him. See if you can overturn it. So what? He's had that discussion with people on his staff probably two dozen times, mm -hmm. and there are times you talk to him early in the day when he's set on doing it, and they always talk him out of it. Hey, it's, there's no point in doing it. You know, uh, Bonds is gone now, basically. McGuire's gone. Sosa's gone. They're all gone. Alex Rodriguez has nine years left on his contract. He's going to be the poster boy for everything that's happened. Any room he walks into whenever he steps on the field, that's the first thing people are going, are going to think of. Mm -hmm. We think of the great athletes have to be mentally tough. This guy is going to have to have mental toughness uh, you know, beyond what is comprehensible, beyond what Michael Jordan would be able to comprehend. Yeah, that's if he's still in the major leagues a month from now, because at the rate of deterioration, he's going to have to seek political <laughs> asylum in some other country. Yeah, you at know, this if point. this, keep, yeah, if this keeps going, it's, it's going to get ugly. I mean, what, what next? You know, at some point, John Smoltz said this uh, today. At some point, somebody's going to, have to come out and just tell the whole truth, mm -hmm. and they'll find out maybe people are forgiving. Yep. Richard Justice of the Houston Chronicle, twice in one week on this. All right, let's maybe we can give it a rest, I hope. Uh, <laughs> take care, Richard. Thanks. Thank you, Keith.